news or your congressman voting up and down for a war. And if we did that, we wouldn't have gone to war. And if we had to go to war, we'd fight them with them and then we'd come home. was fought, uh, you know, as a consequence or a sequence from 9-11. It had nothing to do with 9-11 because there was no weapons of mass destruction, no uh, Al-Qaeda al there. But when they came up with the resolution, I was on the Iraq, uh, on the International Relations Committee, the resolution said, not a, de a declaration of war, they said, the president can do whatever he wants. Essentially that. If you want to go to war, fine. If you don't, you don't have to. And that was how they reneged on the responsibility, which sort of upset me a bit. And, uh, so I introduced a, a substitute resolution and said, okay, I, I told the, the committee, I said, look, you guys want to go to war? I don't want to go to war. But I'm offering a resolution of a declaration of war. I said, I'm not going to vote for it, but if you want to go to war, you vote it up and down. Of course, oh, they were furious. Oh, no. And then they did voice vote and vote it down. I said, I'm going to make you record the vote. You voted against the declaration of war. Yeah. It was explained to me by the committee chairman of the time that they were trying to uh, explain to me the Constitution. They say, he said, that part of the Constitution is anachronistic. We don't follow that part of the Constitution. <laughs> that tells you why we're in trouble today. Because the Constitution doesn't mean a whole lot. They ignore it, they, the courts overrule it, and uh, it's, a, it's a real mess. We got into this mess by not following it. We can get out of it by sending only people to Washington that will obey the Constitution. of big government, whether it's uh, for the entitlement welfare system or for the warfare system, because the bigger the government gets, the smaller the people get, the less of the liberties that we have. It's characteristic under a war that civil liberties are compromised. People, people have uh, sort of accepted this idea, well, under these special emergency conditions, we have to give up a little bit of our liberties. Let me tell you, you don't. You don't have to give up liberties to be safe. have a perpetual war, it's worldwide, any country, and we're in 130 countries, 900 bases, because we're fighting a war on terrorism. We're, we're fighting the Taliban. The Taliban are people who just want us out of their country. You know, that's, that's what they want. But, uh, but the war is uh, worldwide, and uh, therefore uh, we should expect that a continuation of an attack on our civil liberties, much worse than I think it's been in the past. Today, of course, immediately after 9-11, I said I voted for the support to go after the Al-Qaeda. That is proper, even though I saw our foreign policies being seriously flawed, contributing to that problem. But they attack us, we got to deal with it, we go get them. But we didn't even catch modern for 10 years, and we went and occupied two countries in a country that had zero to do with it. So uh, this, uh, but what, what did they do to the American people? We suffered from the consequence of that. Within two weeks, they had a bill on the floor they had been trying to pass for a couple years, and that bill was called the Patriot Act. So that was voted very easy. I was sitting beside a member of Congress on that day, and uh, I, I saw he was voting for it. I was voting against it. <laughs> voting against it. And, uh, I said, uh, you know it's only been on the floor for an hour, we don't even know exactly what's in it. He said, oh, I know that. And I said, you didn't read it. No, I didn't read it. I said, you know there's going to be bad stuff in there. Yeah, I know that. I said, why are you voting for it? She said, how can I go home and tell my people back at home that I voted for the Patriot Act right after 9-11? He said, that would be a difficult thing to explain. I said, but that's your job. Go home and explain it to them. <laughs> Bills 
name on uh, coming out of Congress, it's almost inevitable that it's going to do the opposite of what it said. So it was a very unpatriotic bill. If they would have called it to repeal the Fourth Amendment Act, I guess nobody would have voted for it. when we get a chance to uh, repeal this, we won't call it repeal the Patriot Act, we'll call it Restore the Fourth Amendment Act. Assume that they have a right to search, seed, and prod us all at the airport and sacrifice all our liberties. Yeah. You know, a year ago, the president announced in this progress against our liberties, he announced that uh, it is a proper procedure for the president of the United States to assassinate American citizens. Oh. But the Congress is not, hasn't been much better. The Congress uh, passed a bill. He, the President signed it on January 1st of this year, the uh, National Defense uh, Authorization Act, with, uh, which Justin mentioned because he was positively opposed to it as I was. Repeals posse comitatus, keeping the military out of state uh, civil laws. It allows the military to arrest any American citizen if he's, if he's associated with any particular group. Just associated. No charges made, no trials. He can be arrested, put in a secret prison, denied an attorney, and kept indefinitely. And that's on the books. We put it on the books. That has to be reversed. Yeah. for the system that we have. And that should encourage all of us because it's well grounded, it's sound, there's sound economics and sound constitutional principles, sound moral judgment about what we should do. At least in this crowd, I wouldn't expect anybody to boo me for suggesting that we have, a, uh, that we apply a golden rule to our foreign policy. <laughs> Tireless, uh, irate minority. We don't need the majority. You need a minority. 
because that's the way it is all the time because they energize the rest of the people. So it's never what we have today and even under communism, you don't have 51% voting for this. It's a high rate majority, a minority that uh, emphasizes this. But this is what we have today. We, we have it and it's growing and we are influencing other people. We are in, in, in transition. I think Justin coming to Congress is representing this. There's going to be a lot more. across the country, we can't even keep track of it all. I go around the country, uh, this really got moving about four years ago, but I meet people who are in office, our state representatives and local offices, they're all over the place, and, and this is wonderful. That's how a real revolution occurs. And ultimately, if these ideas are to prevail, they will not be Republican ideas. They have to be pervasive and invade both Democrats and independents and Republicans yeah. alike, because that is what that the reason why he had to get us off the gold standard and put on wage and price controls, he said, we're all Keynesians now. But someday we have to reverse that. We need the people to say, we all believe in the free market and sound money now. Yeah. It's been said that an idea whose time has come, it cannot be stopped by anything military. The armies can't stop it, governments can't stop it. And I really do believe these ideas whose time has come. And they're not brand new. I didn't invent them. They're, they're, they're not new. It's part of our American tradition. It's part of a tradition that's been going on for many hundreds of years. But these ideas have only been tested in a small manner. But the best test has been here in this country. And then we became the wealthiest and the largest middle class ever. And now, of course, the middle class is shrinking. And we're greatly in debt. We're we're getting poorer, so our test is going to fade unless we pick up those pieces and refine it. We don't have to go back to anything. We don't have to go back to the 19th century gold standard because there's a better understanding about gold and money than there ever was. There's better understanding about economic policy, entitlement system. So this is the reason that we put this to, if we put this together and bring people together, uh, this is going to work. And that is what freedom does. It brings people together. We'll never agree on how we want to use our freedoms. Because we'll never agree in a room like this. There might be 50 different religious values and some with no Christian uh, uh, religious values at all. But freedom answers the question because we don't impose ourselves on other people. Yeah. <laughs> values but economic values this idea that the government has to take care of us and protect us from ourselves and make sure no single person falls through the crack the more they try to prevent people from falling through the crack more the more people yeah. fall through the cracks that's yeah. the how to spend their money. Does that mean some won't do a good job and they might have problems? That, that is true. But it will also incite people to do more for themselves. They will have a greater incentive and there will be a family responsibility, a community responsibility, a more local responsibility. There will be greater wealth in the country. There is no doubt it, that history shows that the freer a country, the wealthier a country. And we've lost the moral high ground because we give it up to people who say, no, the only way you can spread fairness around the world and around this country is by government force, by forcibly redistributing wealth and regulating. It doesn't work. It leads to the crisis that we have here today. So therefore, we have to have a firmer grasp of how freedom works, how the marketplace works, and why you have to have sound money. And it will change. That's all there is to it. But that's where we're making the great progress. This is why it is so wonderful what is happening. We should be optimistic about it, but not casual about it. We can't say this is going to be easy because those who are in charge and who have control of the money system and control of the financial system and control of the military and, and the foreign policy, they will not go away quietly. And yet, this will end because, like I said the other night on TV, they don't accept, the, the opposition won't accept the moral and constitutional argument. They will not be able to get away from the economic argument because this can't go on because we won't have the money to pursue these policies.
say those who expect to um, enjoy the fruits of liberty must, like man, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. So there is some fatigue. I don't like to call it sacrifice, but there is some fatigue. And there is some effort. So in many ways, those of you who would come to a meeting like this are, have a greater responsibility because the masses out there will not be understanding the same things that you do. So if you understand this, you have to bear the burden of the responsibility of doing something about it because it's a greater burden. But if you believe in it, that's what has to happen. And a lot of people come up and say, okay, what do you want me to do? And you know, my answer is do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Some will run for Congress, other offices, some will support people, some will make a lot of money, encourage us by donating money. Who knows what people will do? But I think the most important thing that we all do, which I try very hard to do and continue to do, which I learned early on, is try to understand why you can, how you can place these arguments down and, 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 and uh, compete with the arguments. So it's education. Ultimately, education is the test. But just think of what we have on nightly TV. And I get frustrated because I never get asked questions from an Austrian economic viewpoint. But they haven't been taught it. Most of them don't even have the biggest idea of what they are. So this is, this is the thing. So education is important. Then you say, well, then what do I do? Well, I'll tell you what. There'll be something for you, one way or the other. And uh, that is what's so wonderful. And I really do believe it brings brings people together. It should be a diverse group because everybody's going to use their freedoms in a different way, socially or economically. People should come together. So we should come together to fight for the principle which we can all enjoy in a different manner, and that is enjoying the liberty that we have gotten in a natural, God-given way. I thank you very much for coming.